طلبتنا الأعزاء السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته في سلسلة محاضراتنا في موضوع تشريح الأعصاب نيورو أناتومي نقدم لكم اليوم موضوع Reticular Formation and Autonomic Nervous System First of all we will talk about Reticular Formation Reticular Formation as its name would suggest resembles a net It is a network reticular that is made up of nerve cells and nerve fibers مجموعة من الفايبرز تتجمع حتى تسوي لنا شبكة نسميها reticular formation. The net extends up through the axis of the central nervous system from the spinal cord to the cerebrum. من السبينال كورد إلى السيربرم مجموعة من الفايبرز والنيرفز تكون لنا reticular formation. It is strategically placed among the important nerve tracts and nuclei. It receives input from most of sensory systems and has efferent nerves that descend and influence nerve cells at all level of the central nervous system. It has an exception, exceptionally long dendrites of the neurons of the reticular formation permit input from a wide place ascending and descending pathways. Then here, a group of fibers and nerves present between the tracts, between many structures of the central nervous system, uh, take input from many of these tracts and influencing them. Through its many connections, it can influence skeletal muscle activity, somatic activity, and visceral sensations, the autonomic and endocrine systems, and even the level of consciousness. واحدة من أهم المميزات أو الوظائف لرتيكولار فورميشن it influence many structures, many functions, and even the level of consciousness. Gross appearance. It consists of methylmethacarna, a deeply placed continuous network of nerve cells and fibers that extend from the spinal cord throughout the medulla, the pons, midbrain, subthalamus, hypothalamus, and thalamus. The diffuse network may be divided into three longitudinal columns. We have medial column, median column, medial, and lateral. The median column consists of intermediate size neurons. The medial have the large neurons and the lateral columns which compose mainly of small neurons. راح نشوف هذه الصورة راح نشوف الميديان اللي هي intermediate size الميديال اللي هي long size neurons and then lateral column consists of small neurons. Afferent projections of the reticular formation project onto the reticular formation from most part of central nervous system. تاخذ afferent تستقبل projections from spinal cord, cranial nerve nuclei, and the cerebellum. From the spinal cord, there are the spinoreticular tracts, the spinothalamic tracts, and the medial lemniscus. From the cranial nerve nuclei, there are ascending efferent tracts, which include the vestibular, acoustic, and visual pathway. And then from the cerebellum, there is a cerebelloreticular formation. بعض الأشياء مرات اسم التراكت ينطينا فكرة أنه وين يوصل مثل ما ذكرنا سابقا The cerebellum مثلا هنا اللي يوصلنا cerebellum reticular reticular means it will reach the reticular formation هذه صورة diagram showing the efferent fibers of the reticular formation Efferent projection الصادر multiple efferent pathway extend down to the brainstem and spinal cord throughout the reticulobulbar and reticulospinal ننتبه أن هنا كلمة reticulo صارت بالبداية اللي هي efferent reticulobulbar and reticulospinal tracts to the neurons in the motor nuclei of cranial nerves and the anterior horn cell of spinal cord Now, functions of reticular formation طبعا هذه من المواضيع المهمة أنه نعرف functions of reticular formation First of all, it controls the skeletal muscle Modulating muscle tone and reflex activity, it can also bring about reciprocal inhibition. For example, of reciprocal inhibition, when the flexor muscle contract, the antagonist extensor relax. لما راح يصير عندنا contraction بالflexors و relaxation بالextensors أو مثلاً بالها بالarm مثلاً راح نحتاج إلى أقل ما يمكن من جهد. عكس إذا صار عندنا extension باثنيناتهم فهذه النقطة controlling راح تفيدنا بهذا الموضوع second we, uh, it will control somatic and visceral sensation third control autonomic nervous system fourth control 
of the endocrine nervous system either directly or indirectly through hypothalamic nuclei influence on the biologic clock by means of its multiple afferent and efferent pathway to the hypothalamus and then the reticular activating system arousal and the level of consciousness are controlled by reticular formation هذه ذكرنا عليها level of consciousness واحدة من functions المهمة of the reticular formation إذا نحاول نذكركم بنقطة أنه من ضمن ال functions of reticular formation it control the skeletal muscle not initiating the movement it just control these efforts for moving the skeletal muscles now we will talk briefly about the anatomy of nervous system autonomic nervous system the autonomic nervous system the autonomic nervous system are divided into two parts we have the sympathetic nervous system نشوف هذه الصوره تنطينا فد فكره مبسطه من راح نقرا نقاط النيرفوس سيستم السيمباثيك نيرفوس سيستم راح نتذكر هذه الصوره هنا متاهب للهزيمه هذا الشخص راح نشوف اكو هواي ساين صارت عنده بالبيوبلز بالهير بالهارت ريت الى اخره راح نفتهمها كل الجهود الموجوده بالسيمباثيك حتى نستخدم اقصى ما يمكن من طاقه وراح نفتهم هذه بالنقاط اللي راح نشرحها لاحقا بينما هذه الصورة لهذه الامرأة المرتاحة واللي حاليا في قمة الراحة ما راح تحتاج إلى إفورت قوي راح نفتهم أيضا النقاط اللي راح تكون معاكسة للسيمباثيك إذا عادة السيمباثيك والباراسيمباثيك شغلهم يكون واحد عكس اللاخ واللي أيضا تاخذوها بالفيزيولوجي بشكل أوضح Autonomic nervous system is distributed throughout the central and peripheral nervous system It is divided into two parts, the sympathetic and parasympathetic, consists of both afferent and efferent fibers. Each of sympathetic and parasympathetic has its afferent and efferent fibers. This division between sympathetic and parasympathetic is made on basis of anatomical difference, difference in neurotransmitters, and difference in physiological effect. إذا نريد نعرف الفرق بين سيمباثيك وباراسيمباثيك التقسيم راح يكون على ثلاث أسس رئيسية الفروقات التشريحية anatomical differences neurotransmitters differences biochemical فرق الفرق البيوكيميكال between types of neurotransmitters and the difference in physiologic effect والفيزيولوجيك اللي ذكرناها أو راح نذكرها سابقا ووضحناها بالصور السابقة both sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions produce opposite effect in the muscle organs and are thus considered as physiologic antagonists. First of all, we will talk about the sympathetic and then the parasympathetic. The sympathetic tract is the larger of the two parts of autonomic system and is widely distributed throughout the body. It innervates the heart and lungs, the muscles in the wall of many blood vessels, hair follicles and sweat glands and many abdominal pelvic viscera. The main physiologic effect, it will dilate the pupil, inhibit smooth muscles of the bronchi, intestine, bladder wall, and close sphincters. The hair is made to stand on end and sweating occur. كل هذه النقاط إذا نتذكر الصورة الأولى للشخص اللي يريد ينهزم راح يصير عنده dilatation of pupils. Inhibition of smooth muscles of bronchi والهدف راح تكون البرونكاي أوسع وبالتالي يتنفس بكمية أكبر حتى يستخدم طاقة أكثر Bladder wall relaxed Close sphincters وبالتالي urination will be inhibited يعني وما عنده مجال إلا أنه يركض The hair is made to stand on end and sweating occur Efferent nerve fibers Sympathetic outflow نسميها The lateral gray column or horns on of the spinal cord from the first thoracic segment to the second lumbar segment. From first thoracic segment to the second lumbar segment, possess the cell body bodies of sympathetic connector neurons. Had a sympathetic outflow. Then the axons of these cells leave the cord in the anterior nerve roots. And pass via the white rami communicants to the paravertebral ganglia of the sympathetic trunk. 
اذا نتذكر انه سمباثيك اوت فلو فروم ذا فيرست ثوراسيك تو ذا سكند لمبر سيجمنت افرنت فايبرز افرنت مالينيتد نير فايبرز ترافل فروم ذا فيزيرا ثرو اوت ذا سمباثيك جانجليا ويز اوت ساينابسيس they passes to the spinal nerve and reach posterior root ganglion of the cerebrospinal nerves the central axon then enter the spinal cord they either form an efferent component of a local reflex arc or ascend to higher centers such as hypothalamus sympathetic trunk will indicate by the slide slide in sabqa are two ganglionic nerve trunks that extend the whole length of the vertebra tunnel واللي راح نشوفها واضحه بالمختبرات العمليه In the neck, each trunk has three ganglia. In the thorax, eleven or twelve ganglia. In the lumbar region, four or five, and in the pelvic, four or five. Relations of sympathetic trunk, sympathetic trunk, اللي موجود اللي هو two ganglionic nerve trunks اللي موجودة بال along the back. In the neck, the trunks lie anterior to transverse process of the cervical vertebra. In the thorax, they are anterior to the head of the ribs or lie on the side of the vertebral bodies. In the abdomen, they are anterior lateral to the side of the bodies of the lumbar vertebra. And in the pelvis, they are anterior to the sacrum. The two ganglionated nerve trunks, two sympathetic trunks, in the pelvis, they are anterior to the sacrum. Uh, in the pelvis, they uh, have one below. The two trunks end by joining together to form a single ganglion called the ganglion impar. Even in the two sympathetic trunk, the two sympathetic trunks will be in these relations that we mentioned in the neck, thorax, abdomen, and pelvis. It will be united in a single ganglion called the ganglion impar. Parasympathetic part of the autonomic system. The activities of parasympathetic part of autonomic system are directed toward conserve, conserving and restoring energy. The current sympathetic and the whole axis had to use the energy in the correct The parasympathetic will be focused on this energy and we will use it to benefit from it later. Like what we saw in the second picture, the woman who was happy was restoring her restoring her energy. The heart rate is slowed, while the heart rate is increasing. Pupils are constricted, peristalsis and glandular activity is increased, sphincters are opened, and the bladder wall is contracted. Efferent nerve fibers. Here we are going to craniosacral outflow. We have an outflow with parasympathetic from the cranial part and outflow from the sacral. So we are going to call it craniosacral outflow. The connector nerve cells of parasympathetic part of autonomic nervous system are located in the brainstem and the sacral segment of the spinal cord. Even mechanism, brainstem, and sacral segment. The sacral area we have efferent from oculomotor, facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerve. With oculomotor, we have the parasympathetic nucleus. In facial, we have superior salivary and lacrimatory nucleus. In glossopharyngeal, we have inferior salivatory nucleus, and in vagus nerve, we have the dorsal nucleus of the vagus. The axons of these connector cells are myelinated and emerge from the brain within the cranial nerves. The sacral connector nerve cells are found in the gray matter of the second, third, and fourth sacral segment of the spinal cord. Even second, third, and fourth sacral. فصار عندنا الكرينيو ساكرال اوتفلو كرينيال بارت من الاوكيلوموتور فيشال جلوسوفارينجيال اند فيجاس والساكرال من السكند ثيرد اند فورث ساكرال سيجمنتس هذا اول فرق راح نقدر نفرقه بين اناتوميكالي بين السمباثيك والباراسمباثيك عدا الفروقات الفيزيولوجيك اللي ذكرناها سابقا ذا كرينيال Parasympathetic ganglia are ciliary, pterygopalatine, submandibular, and otic. In certain locations, the ganglion are placed in nerve plexus such as cardiac plexus, pulmonary plexus, myenteric plexus, on semi plexus, and mucosal plexus, mesenteric plexus. 
Afferent nerve fibers travel from the viscera to, the cell, to their cell bodies located either in the sensory ganglion of the cranial nerves or in the posterior root ganglion of the sacrospinal nerves. They may take part in the formation of local reflex arcs or pass to higher centers of the autonomic nervous system such as hypothalamus. The large autonomic plexus. The large autonomic plexus are large collection of sympathetic and parasympathetic efferent nerve fibers and their associated ganglia together with the visceral efferent fibers. Hadi collections is a large autonomic plexus. Adni sympathetic parasympathetic will be a efferent with visceral efferent fibers. Form autonomic nerve plexus in the thorax, abdomen, have a nerve plexus in the pelvis. Branch from the plexus elevated the viscera. In thorax, edna, cardiac, pulmonary, and esophageal plexus. In abdomen, the plexus are associated with the aorta and its branches celiac, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric, and aortic plexus. In pelvis, the superior and inferior hypogastric plexus. Either the large autonomic plexus is a large collection of sympathetic and parasympathetic efferents with their associated efferent and efferent fibers. Fibers that innervate the viscera. Autonomic ganglia is the site where preganglionic nerve fibers synapse with postganglionic nerve fibers. The sympathetic ganglia form part of sympathetic trunk or are paravertebral in position, while the parasympathetic ganglia are situated close to or within the wall of viscera. هذا فرق آخر راح نشوف ال autonomic ganglia اللي هي preganglionic شوك تلتقي بالبوست جانجليونيك يصير سينابسس بالسيمباثيك جانجليا راح تكون هذه بري فيرتيبلا ان بوزيشن او ان سيمباثيك ترانك بينما يعني بالبدايه بينما البارا سيمباثيك جانجليا راح نلقيها قريبه من الاورجان كلوز تو اور ويزن وول اوف ذا فيزيرا راح نشوف هذه الصوره راح تنطينا اول شيء هذا الازرق الفايبرز الازرق اللي هي كرينيال and sacral شرحت انطينا parasympathetic نسمي cranio sacral outflow وراح نشوف هذا كله pre-ganglionic وهنا الجنجليون وهنا post-ganglionic fibers وهذا الجنجليون عادة بالparasympathetic سواء كانت هنا بالcranial أو ننزل لجوا بالsacral قريبة من الorgan بينما الparasympathetic بينما sympathetic اللي هي من first dorsal أو first thoracic إلى second lumbar ال pre-ganglionic راح توصل لهذا سمينا sympathetic trunk والجنجليا هنا تكون أما بال sympathetic trunk أو تكون pre-vertebral in position والفايبرز راح تأخذ مسافة إلى أن توصل للorgans عدا الفروقات الفيزيولوجيكال شكرا جزيلا وإن شاء الله تكون هذه المحاضرة واضحة